Next, let's go after the main navigation menu. Of course, this guy was set up as a bulleted list, but he's soon to look a heck of a lot more like a main navigation menu. So give me a second here. I'm going to flip back over to my code. This is the HTML, of course, and there's the nav menu, this guy right here. So let's go after him. This is going to be inside, of course, the external style sheet, styles.css. And I'll go and create this guy right below the header. I'll just keep adding these guys on. So there's actually a bunch of things that I want to do here. I'm going to start things off by redefining the main nav element itself. Just like we saw with header, this guy is an existing HTML element. So we're just going to redefine what it means to be a nav. And here's what I want to do to this guy. I want to force a width on this guy of, you guessed it, 960 pixels. There we go. Finish that off with a closing semicolon. And I'm also going to force a height onto this guy, a height of 35 pixels. So go ahead and add that in there. There we go. And I'm also going to set a background color for this guy as well. Background full colon space. I'll stick with the RGB. And I want the background color of the main navigation menu to be pure black. So I'm going to go 0, 0, 0 for the RGB, the red, green, and blue color values. There's still a little bit more that I want to do here. I want any text that winds up inside the nav element, specifically the main navigation menu that you and I have typed out, I want it to be center aligned. So I'm going to go text hyphen align, full colon space, and then center. I'm going to leave it at that for now. There is still more that I want to do to this guy, but let's leave it at that and go and see what we get inside our browser. So head back to your browser and go ahead and refresh Controller Command R. Okay, so there we go. There's the main nav element. And there's the text inside the main nav element now centered, which is great. But they're still bulleted items. These bullets are all the way over here on the left-hand side. And of course, there's overlapping text, and it's a bit of a mess, and so on. So there's still a little bit more work that we need to do here to this guy. So give me a second here. I'm going to head back over to my external style sheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rule that says, all right, if I have a nav element, and that nav element contains a list item, exactly like you and I set up, then I want to go and apply some formatting to that content. I don't know if you've ever used these guys before. They're incredibly useful. I think of them as, have you ever heard of conditional formatting? Or have you ever worked with something called conditional formatting? Lots of software applications have this. In other words, what it means is, if certain criteria are met, then this formatting is going to be applied. If a hyperlink appears inside a paragraph, and that paragraph appears inside an article, then make those hyperlinks green or something like that. So what we're doing here is we're saying, all right, if I have any list items that appear inside a nav element, which of course, back inside our HTML, you and I do, there's our list item inside a nav element. All right, then what do we want to do to this guy? Well, we have to go and specify some CSS properties inside the curly brackets. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to say, all right, if I have a list item inside a nav element, I want to set his display to inline. That's going to blow out the bulleted list look and feel. If you want, you can go and save and refresh your browser. Now we get something like this. Wonderful. But notice that all of our menu items, they're all kind of jammed together. So what I want to do is I want to space them apart a little bit. So I'm going to head back into my external style sheet and inside my nav li compound rule, I'm going to say margin hyphen left. So that's the space on the outside, the left hand outside of the list item. I'm going to try 10 pixels. We might decide to change that, increase it or decrease it. Let's see what we get here. Go and refresh. There we go. Something like that. So now there's a gap of space between each of these guys, which is great. Now, I'm going to head back to my code because there's actually a little bit more that I want to do on the nav element itself, just some spacing issues that I noticed back inside the browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add on a few more properties here after the text align center. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say padding. Now, I haven't sort of declared this or specified this, but the difference between margin and padding, as a matter of fact, we do want some margin in just a moment. So we have margin and padding, and lots of people confuse the two. They're both related to space. You might know the difference between the two. I don't know. 
but padding is the spacing on the inside of the object. Margin is the spacing on the outside of the object. We just specified some spacing on the outside left of a list item. That's how we got some spacing in there. So what I want to do now is I want to specify some spacing on the inside of my nav element. So padding, full colon, space. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, all right, I want 10 pixels of space above and below on the inside top and inside bottom, if you will, of this object, but no spacing on the left or the right, followed by a semicolon. So the first value is always top and bottom. The second value is always left and right. And then I'm going to do the same thing, margin there. I'm going to throw some margin onto this guy, but specifically it's going to be margin hyphen bottom that I want to set for this guy. So margin hyphen bottom, space, and let's see, I'm going to throw in, I'm going to try 20 pixels for this guy. Go ahead and save up your work and head back to your browser and refresh. There we go, something like this. So we had to adjust a little bit for some of the spacing issues that we were having there. And once again, margin and padding, I don't know if you're comfortable with that or not. The only reason I bring it up is because lots of people have trouble with it, understanding the difference between margin and padding. Again, padding's on the inside. Think of cell padding on a table, right? A table cell. Padding's on the inside, margin's on the outside. Now, there's only one more thing that I want to do, and that is I want to change the color of my hyperlinks. I went and clicked on one of my links earlier, and all the links on my page are now purple because they're all null links. So I want to change that, though, because the purple looks a little gaudy. I'm going to use another compound rule for this. And the compound rule is going to say, all right, if I have a hyperlink inside a list item and that list item appears inside a nav, then I want to change the color. Any hyperlinks that don't appear inside a list item inside a nav can remain as they are. So once again, the trick is to know how to code this stuff over inside the external style sheet. So here's what I'm going to type in beneath my nav li. I'm going to type in nav li a because a is a hyperlink. I'm going to read this backwards from right to left. If I have a hyperlink and that hyperlink appears inside a list item and that list item appears inside a nav, then I want that color to appear white. So I'm going to say color, full colon space, RGB, and then in brackets, 255, comma, 255, comma, 255, just like that. Go ahead and save up your work and head back to your browser and refresh. And there we go. We now have white hyperlinks inside the main navigation bar. So there you go. There's setting up the main navigation bar. I threw a whole bunch of stuff at you there. The margin and the padding, of course. And also, perhaps more importantly, getting that bulleted list to appear as a navigation menu, which we did. And of course, using some compound rules as well.